We were serving then um, Europe, um, the Middle East, parts of Central Asia, and the northern half of Africa, and the southern half of Africa was, was looked after by Arin. But of course, over the time, the RARs have developed and evolved, and new ones have been set up. So there are five now, Arin for North America, LACNIC for South America, and parts of the Caribbean, AFRINIC for Africa, uh, APNIC for the Asia Pacific region, out of Australia, and ourselves. We are covering uh, 76 countries, which sometimes is a little bit of a, of a challenge in terms of diversity, but it's also very nice because you're all so different among, among all those different countries. It's great to work for so many different and diverse people. So, like I said, we do allocate uh, IPv4 and IPv6 addresses still, and uh, also ASNs. But we do more than that. Uh, we started as the Secretariat, basically as a neutral platform, doing things for the um, internet community in our service region that they need to do on a neutral platform. The, I, the ISPs, as, as you know, uh, tend to compete with each other, but some things they, they need to do together, and uh, we are one of the platforms to do this on. For instance, uh, a root uh, name server cluster has been, uh, we've been asked also in the early 90s to, to run that, and as you, you might know, we, we do uh, run the K root servers. So again, a neutral place to do those things. Uh, other things as well, training, measurements, and we have talked about that and we'll talk about that a little bit further on. So the legal setup is that uh, it's a membership association, so we have members. Our members uh, tell us what to do. Uh, otherwise, it's very um, independent of all other influences. Basically, we listen to our members. Uh, it's very much uh, bottom up, and it's not for profit as well. So anyone can become a member. We sit in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and as such then under Dutch law. Um, like I said, we, have, we are doing what our members want us to do. We are fully independent and, and autonomous and funded by only our members, which is great. Um, so the mantra on, on how we are doing our work and what we are and how we are, it's uh, open, transparent, neutral and impartial. Um, with offices, the main office in Amsterdam and small offices in Dubai and in Moscow as well. With about, I think that needs updating, about 140 staff members right now. So there's loads of things uh, happening all the time, of course, I mean, there's the standard uh, work that we do, but also there, there are some, some focus points I want to talk about a little bit here for this year. But basically the idea is uh, that the membership growth is rather rapid. Um, we also go a little bit more into, into the regions to uh, get to know you better. Um, IPv6 is taking off, it's getting there. Um, we see lots of transfers in IPv4, talk about that. Um, some member feedback, how do we get that, and uh, hint that the general meeting is coming, which is the formal point for you to take influence and make your influence known at the RIPE NCC. So, the focus for this year, we said, uh, we planned last year, and, and it's, it's written down in the activity plan. You might have seen that. I hope that you did. Uh, the main focus point is to maintain a strong and a correct registry of uh, IP addresses. That is essential that we do that. If we don't do this, then that's a major weakness, and uh, we are in trouble. So this is what we need to do. And we do various things towards that, but uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So, um, outreach, outreach to our members within the service region, but also beyond our members to, to governments and, and regulators and, and the like and police forces, um, but of course the, the main focus here are our members. And uh, in terms of focus for this year, uh, we said we won't do anything great, big, shiny, new, we'll uh, more or less look at our current services and adjust them a little bit, make them more efficient, make them more easy to understand and to access. So that would be that focus there. And uh, yeah, more efficiency, always a good thing. But also with so many things that are going on in the internet governance world, around the world, it is very easy to go and, and, and travel around and do all sorts of things. Uh, we have heard from our members in, in sort of, uh, contexts that we had and, and, and questions that we have asked and, and got answers to, that uh, you would like us to be very present within our service region, which is totally and utterly normal and, and, and a good thing. So we said, let's focus on that, and I, I get told by my colleagues to go to all the regional meetings that we are doing instead of 
gallivanting around the globe, doing, going to other places. So I'm, I'm here, I'm doing that. Uh, also, we don't always only do big ripe meetings or Enox or, or Menox, but also we said we'll, we'll just take the opportunity when we are somewhere in the region to um, meet you at uh, other events, sort of uh, have a side event, have a, have a member lunch there. Recently was, was in Lisbon for some other thing, but we invited our members there from, from, from the region and we had a lunch out there and, and talked to them. It was quite nice. So those things we do, trainings of course as well. Um, going to, into smaller pockets of our service region where we haven't been before with a the, with the bigger meeting. Um, it's really very, very uh, good to, to meet you there. So, of course, the idea here is that we understand your needs and that we get an idea of what you want from us and, and, and also how you think we are doing in you know, serving you. Um, also, it's... Uh, a bit of a focus internally that we, that we talk to our staff and say, okay, so you went there, so what did you hear? Can we, can we make that a little bit more structurally available, that information in-house to, again, then turn that into action and serve our members better? Speaking of members, oh my God, it's going up and to the right, it's getting steeper. Um, about, probably by now, 12,500 members. Um, I remember we had a oh, 2,000 or something early on when I started. Um, it's amazing. I mean, the internet thing is amazing, but uh, apparently there are, there are more and more people that want IP addresses and, and, and get them also. It's great. But of course, it's also a bit of a challenge in serving all of them. Um, well, you probably know that by now, Maxim and Anton are in the, in the region um, looking, looking after you, which is one of those um, major things that we've done over the last couple of years, having a little bit of local stuff as well. So, um, regional presence, I mentioned that. Um, we are beyond our own meetings. We are supporting a network, network operators group within the region, within countries. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great thing when, when operators come together and talk to each other. And like I said, we do also smaller meetings. Uh, we've, this year we've been in uh, Georgia and Armenia a couple of uh, weeks ago. And uh, those are always very, very satisfying, very uh, and endearing events in, in just meeting, meeting uh, our members there and just meeting new folks too. Um, of course, ENOC is important to us, so we are, we are here to support it, clearly. Um, like I said, we, we take every opportunity that we, that we can to talk not only to our members and, and the operators, but also to their governments and, and, and your regulators. Uh, that's important to us as well to understand what's going on in the region and of course we only have uh, moderate influence there and moderate understanding from, from Amsterdam so we need your help on those things. But there are lots of things going on. Um, the ITU is always a bit of a challenge there. Uh, general regulation, the internet, uh, internet governance around the world, Internet Governance Forum and now this is the World Summit on Internet Soci uh, Society that we had 10 years ago. It's 10 years further and they are gathering again there their thoughts for the end of the year and they'll decide whether, for instance, the Internet Governance Forum will continue. I won't talk much about IPv6. We have our special person for that, Natalie. She'll talk about this uh, later this session. But generally the idea is uh, it is actually increasing uh, IPv6 usage. More than 70% of our members have space. Uh, we do what we can uh, within our, our reach to, to help that. Um, I'm optimistic. It'll get there. Uh, but of course, more needs to be done, especially in the Ukraine there. It's a little bit on the, on the low side there compared with the rest of the service region, so get cracking, people. Um, I won't talk about this that much. Uh, obviously, IPv4 is not uh, available in great chunks anymore, so you see that dropping off a little bit there in terms of, of uh, allocations. But uh, it's, it's still there in small bits, and uh, it's being used given out. So people say, oh, we ran out of IPv4. Yes, we did in the usual way, but we have more uh, than a slash eight left in, in what we call the available pool there. Um, every member and every new member can get a slash 22, so slightly more than a thousand addresses. Um, that is available. The idea is to keep that flowing for new people entering the market and uh, basically building some, some uh, fundament there for the, for the future because IPv4 won't go away anytime soon, right? Um, so 
What we do see, of course, as the, the big pipe is, is dribbling only with IPv4, we do see the increased number of uh, transfers there, and they are really cranking up the numbers. In all of 2014, we had uh, just over 900 transfers, and uh, by now, in 2015, more than 2,000 already. So um, it's not unexpected, but it's, yeah, it's happening. Um, also, we've seen a couple of changes. At one point, we thought, oh, we're running out of IPv4, and then we won't need much uh, work in terms of policy development anymore because, oh, there's IPv6, and that's it. Oh, we were so wrong. There's so much going on. If you follow the lists um, on, on all sorts of uh, adjustments and, and tweaks there to the policies, this one is a, a particular one to um, inhibit frequent and qu quick uh, uh, transfers and, and, and trade in, in those small IPv4 address blocks. So again, that's the uh, good thing about the whole bottom-up industry self-regulation. Uh, it works fairly well. The community sees what's going on. Of course, we do report what's going on as well. And uh, then the appropriate uh, policy action is taken. Yeah, more transfers. Uh, that's the number of transfers, and that is the number of addresses being transferred. And again, it's fairly up and to the right. Um, of course, with scarce resources, and scarce resources becoming scarcer, what we do see are increased attempts to um, get addresses that are not really yours um, from here and there. So um, we have to be very careful. What we are looking at, uh, we do see fairly sophisticated uh, tricks there, trying to fool us with fake registration, company registration, um, fake passports and things like that. Um, and whole websites, whole, whole domains have been set up to look like somebody else's, but you know. So we need to be very, very careful uh, what we are looking at and, and to whom we are allocating those addresses. Um, and it's not unsuspected. We, we knew this was, was coming and we have uh, increased our you know, staffing levels in, in that side. Um, we have looked in, in over the course of last year at uh, 233 um, address blocks resources being um, allocated or you know, being requested. And it is always on our side a little bit difficult. Of course, we want, I said, it's important that the registry is up to date and correct. Um, and it's uh, also easy to be very nitpicky there. So we, it's, it's the challenge for us to also be somewhat accommodating and find the right balance between being really difficult and being sort of a, a nuisance for you, requesting addresses, and also on the other side, still looking at stuff and making sure that what we see is correct and, and true. So um, that's what we, what we try to, to balance there. Many times we have been told that, oh, training is great, do more training, do training everywhere, and do all sorts of training, and we uh, see that as a little bit of a challenge because we only have so many people, so many trainers, and of course we love going out and we think we will continue always to go out in person, have training courses, live face-to-face -face tra training courses, it's important that we get that, that personal feedback there. But also we acknowledge that the demand for training is, is really, really high, and we can't meet that with face-to-face -face only. So we're looking at all sorts of, of, of ways of, of doing that. What we have launched uh, late last year is the uh, RIPE NCC Academy. Basically, it's a more structured approach to online uh, training there. Please do have a look if you haven't done that yet. You get certificates if you, if you follow the courses. And we, of course, over time are filling, filling the academy with all sorts of different courses there as well. Um, feedback, yes. We have done a couple of uh, large-scale surveys, uh, membership surveys. We have done a couple of small sort of more focus group based things um, because the large-scale sur uh, surveys are also quite a bit of work for us and also for you. So we do them every three years now. And uh, next year we'll do one. So uh, we, are <coughs> Excuse me. we are preparing for that already. Uh, so when you see the survey come, coming in, please uh, look at it, and not only look at it, but please fill it in, because it's also for your benefit to tell us what you think of the things that we are doing, and especially next time around, less about how great we are doing here and there, or not so great, but basically tell us precisely what else we should be doing that we are not doing yet. Uh, th those things are, are really important to us. 
but of course there are other ways to talk to us, well, obviously we're here. Um, you can send us emails. Um, like I said, training courses, member lunches, those things are, are also ways to, to talk to us. Um, a new thing that we have uh, been doing now for quite a while are those assisted registry checks. Um, it's sort of mini audits where we present you with the information we have about you and your address holdings basically to, for you to have a quick and, and easy way to check that that is all correct or maybe somebody left the company and we should have another name there, another telephone number there. Um, that is something that puts uh, mild uh, demand of, uh, for your time on, onto you but helps us quite a bit with, with keeping the registry clean and, and up to date. So it's important that we do this. We want to touch every member every three years with 12,000 members now. You see that is going to be quite a bit of work in the future. So that is basically maybe where some of our focus on doing allocations goes into doing those, those registry checks. Um, online, yeah, I said you can of course uh, send us emails and, and all that, but of course, there are other ways as well, and we'll talk about that a bit. But um, there's more to be done. What we get from, from the latest feedback we received is uh, accountability and transparency at the RIPE agency is quite okay, you say, but you see an, in, an increase there, but there's never enough. It, it's never good enough, so we are constantly working on that. A value for money for uh, all of our members, we, we need to be doing the right things that are, are useful to you, but also we need to do them in a way that is not too costly. It's cost efficient, well, it must be. So we're also looking at that. Wide involvement for both the general meeting and the policy development process. Um, it's great to see many people participating, but we don't see 12,000 people participating. Um, so there can, can be done more. Procedure simplification, we have done quite a bit there and we do get positive feedback about that. But again, it's, not, it's never simple enough, it can, can be done more and we're looking at that. Uh, engagement throughout the service region, I talked about that, we are going out. And um, the other thing is translations, we always get, get requests for translations of our documents into various languages, that's a tricky one. We uh, try to do this as, as best as we can but quality control and, and such things are difficult. And I said uh, early on we are serving uh, 76 countries with quite a lot of different languages, so where do we put priority? Um, high training standards, of course. I mentioned the academy. <coughs> That's important to us as well. So, continuity of service. Um, yeah, our board sent a couple of, of, of emails in, in the past. Basically, the idea here is that um, we are an association, membership association, under Dutch law, so Dutch law governs us and they let us alone pretty much. But of course there are a couple of things that complicate life for, for us and, and, and for you. And it's our priority to, to serve every member in all of our service region and there might be conflicts and there might be you know, politics going on. This is not for us. We are an organization serving all of our members as, as, as we can. And I think so far we have succeeded quite, quite well with that. I mentioned participation in general meetings. We have uh, a right meeting coming up in Bucharest in uh, four weeks, roughly, I think. Um, there will, of course, be a general meeting again. Uh, the general meeting is the formal checkpoint for members to talk to the board, um, to vote for the board uh, uh, member candidates, early on in the year, and this time we will look at um, the, 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 the activity plan and, and talk to you about those things. Um, there are lots of things going on. And this, like I said, this is a formal way that, that shouldn't be underestimated that you can, can take part in, in those things. Uh, not only physically being in the room, but we have for a couple of years now uh, webcast the, the proceedings there as well, and we do electronic voting, so um, there's no real good excuse not to, not to be part of that. Please have a look. Um, so in November, we will look at, like I said, at the activity plan and the budget. I'll uh, explain what we are changing or what we are proposing to change over the course of next year, where we want to add a little bit more and other things are a little bit less expensive. Um, basically, this is a final version that I'll, I'll be presenting that uh, has been seen. No, it's not the final version. It's a draft version that's seen by the board. 
um, and the board is, is fine with it. And of course, after the general meeting, after the feedback that we receive from you there, the board then will in December uh, maybe ask us to, to change a little bit there, but then uh, formally approve that, and then that's the plan for next year. Um, also, with the rather rapid increase in membership, we, do, we will have quite a significant surplus by the end of the year. And um, there are two options here. We can keep the money, uh, then we'll be taxed on it, which you know, is, is, not a, is not a problem, it's fine. And then what's left over after taxes, we can put into our reserves. Um, or the other option is to give uh, the surplus back to our members, and that will come up to about 350 euros per member for next year, credited against their uh, membership fee. So you might have an interest in, in voicing your opinion there. Like I said, voting can be done also remotely, and this is uh, more or less the map where we have seen uh, our votes in May come from, and I looked at it and said this is weird little blob hanging off Kazakhstan that to the, to the east, that's China, really. China is not part of our service region. However, we have members in China, and we have members in other places that are not part of our service region, so actually we had a vote from China. And also on, the, on that side over there, we had a couple of votes from, uh, from the US coming in, which didn't fit on the, on the map there anymore, because we do focus on our service region. So um, 590 votes, it's not bad, 49 countries, it's not bad, but we have 12,000 members and 76 countries, so can we up those numbers for next time, please? And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them, and I'll be here through all of the sessions, so I don't know how we want to do this, now or later. Anyway, thank you.